Welcome to this Franklin Public School screencast for PowerSchool. This screencast will show parents some of the new features added into PowerSchool. To get to PowerSchool, you can always go to this address directly, which is http colon slash slash ps.franklin.k12.wi.us. It's a good idea to bookmark that so that you can always go right to the login screen. Uh, you can also get there from the new district webpage. You can use the menus at the top of the district webpage. There's one for PowerSchool. When you mouse over PowerSchool, one of the choices below that is the login for parents and students. So you can click on that to get to this login screen. Your login and your uh, password are the same the entire time you're in the district. So whatever it was last year, it's going to be the same thing for that child. Uh, so you start by logging in with your username as P for parent, and then your child's six-digit ID number. And then your password is four randomly assigned digits that were given to you the very first time you used PowerSchool. And again, that does not change. So if you have a copy of that letter at home, you can look that up. If you can't find it, you can contact the school secretary. They can look up that information. When you do contact the school secretary, you will need your ID number, or your child's ID number, and the child's date of birth to verify that information. So here we are logged into PowerSchool on the parent side. Uh, the navigation is still very similar at the top, different pages that we'll go through in a minute. And uh, over here is the PowerSchool logo. At any point when you're navigating through the site, you can always click this to come back to this very first start page. This very first start page is the grades and attendance page. And it's the very first page listed up in our navigation area as well. So let's look at this. On the left side, you have the current two weeks of attendance. So this is showing attendance for this student for last week and attendance for this week. If there were any absences, there would be some lettered codes that would be filled in in these boxes showing the period or the hour of the day that the student missed. Those lettered codes have a legend down at the bottom. If you scroll down, there are different lettered codes showing the uh, absence attendance codes. In the middle of this page, there is the course listing for the student. It lists the course as well as the teacher's name. You'll notice that the teacher's name is blue. Anything that is blue in PowerSchool can be clicked on to get some more information. If you click on a teacher's name, it should launch your email program at home and, and pop that teacher's email address right into your email program. If your computer is not figured, uh, configured correctly, it might give you some kind of an error message. Um, but that is the point of being able to click on that. If you just want to get the teacher's email, they've added this new little uh, icon next to the teacher's name where you can click on that and it loads up the teacher's name as well as the teacher's email address. So now you can copy the teacher's email address from this window and paste it into whatever email program you use. Next is the quarter listings or semester listings and the current grades. Uh, then there's the absences and the tardies. You can click, again, anything that's blue. So if we look at this student, let's pick their language arts class. If we click on the grade for that class, it takes us to the uh, class score detail page. Here it gives all the information about this particular class. It says the course name, the teacher, the period that the class meets, and it says final grade. Um, there is a caveat with this. The final grade, it's not final until the end of the term. So this is just the current grade according to all the assignments that are in the grade book. Teachers should have a section description here that just lists some generic information about the class, what the class covers. Uh, there might be some web links in here for, for teacher resources online. There might be email addresses or phone numbers or good times to call. So you can check that area for some information straight from the teacher. Down here we see the teacher's grade book and the particular assignments for this student. Here are the due dates. Uh, these are the categories that the different assignments fall into. Here are the actual assignments. And then this is a new feature, these lettered, or not lettered, these uh, codes. Some of them have letters, some of them are symbols. These codes teachers can use now to show a particular feature relating to that assignment. For example, if we look at this, this assignment, first impressions reading response, has an L, meaning that it was late. And how you know what that means, there is a key at the bottom here. So the check mark means it was collected. Some teachers choose to use that. L means late, M means that the assignment is missing, EX means that the score is exempt from the final grade, and if it has this star, it means it's something maybe that the teacher was collecting, but it doesn't have an impact on the grade. So in this case, this teacher sent home a parent contact sheet, uh, was collected, and it does not affect in the final grade. Here are the scores for the assignments, the number of points out of however many points were assigned, the percentage that that equates to, and then the letter grade for that assignment. Each of the pages in PowerSchool does have this print page down here so if you have to print this for any reason uh, you can click print page send that job to your printer. So that is, is an example of a teacher 
page, let's go back and look at some other features that you can use. If we go to this teacher here, this student, we click on the grade here, uh, you'll notice some of the assignments here are blue. Teachers can add descriptions for the assignments. So if we click on this podcast reviews assignment, it says here in the description area that this was an assignment where the students had to review podcasts selected for class in class. So it gives a little bit more information about what that assignment was. And again, if it's blue, you can click on it and see that information. Another new feature that was added, uh, teachers can leave a comment now per assignment. So here it says that this assignment was M, meaning it's missing, and if we click on the zero because it's blue, the teacher chose to leave a comment in here that says the student did not turn in the assignment in class, please turn in. So again, not, not every assignment will have a comment, but if you do see that, that's an indicator that it can be clicked on for some more information. That is the grades and attendance area. Grades history, you can click on this and see uh, the grade history for the current year only. So as you get later in the year, you can look back. Attendance history goes back beyond just the two weeks. So if you click on that, it goes back to the start of the term. The email notification page is very handy for parents. We recommend definitely going to this area and, and doing the following steps. When you go into email notification, it says here, what information would you like to receive by email? You can check on these different boxes, and they, these three, one is a summary of the current grades and attendance, another is detailed reports showing all assignment scores for a class, another is a detailed report of attendance. Depending on your student, you may just want to select one or two of these, you may want all of them. Uh, you can come back in and change this if you find you're getting too many emails. How often do you want these reports to send? You can choose here. We recommend once a week or once every two weeks. Um, if you, we recommend not doing this daily. Uh, teachers update their grades two weeks from when an assignment is collected. So if you choose daily, you might be getting reports that don't change for a while because teachers do have that time to put the assignments in. You can send the assignments now just as a test and then you enter your email address or email addresses. So if we put in an email address, it's going to send the report to that email address. If you want the email, if you want the reports to go to two people, you could put in the other person's email address, separated by a comma, and when you click submit, that stores the email address. The reports will be sent however often you choose, and it will also, if you check this box, send a sample right then. So you can definitely check that out uh, and you know set that up so you can receive that information about your, your child's progress. The teacher comments area, this is for comments that are on the report card at the end of the term. So as you go through the school year, you can look back and see the comments that were left by the teacher for that student for that class. And these other three uh, pages we're currently not using. School bulletin, class registration, and my calendars we're, we're currently not using. If you do need other help in the system, you can click the little question mark that is up here in the corner, and that'll open the help menu. And it's very good practice to always make sure you click log out. Uh, that way it fully closes out the account and uh, it's not left over on whatever computer you're using. So we hope that you enjoy using PowerSchool. There's just a few little tweaks that were added and uh, thank you very much for watching the screencast.